Hi everybody, this is Dr. Mack at Pacific East Aquaculture. Really excited today to show you some of the progress that we've uh, been making on the, our, our rebuild following a fire that we had uh, a year ago in February. Uh, it's been a long process, lots of ups and downs. Anybody that's dealt with something like this probably understands. Those of you that haven't, uh, hopefully you never have to. Um, we, uh, this is the outside of our facility. We added a new entrance way. It was always uh, something we weren't really happy with uh, when we first uh, purchased this building 20 years ago. And uh, so we took the opportunity to upgrade some things uh, besides the rebuilding. So the entrance way and uh, we've got a new shade cloth on the greenhouse. And then on this side, uh, we've added another storage building in the back and done some paving on the little road that we have here. This is always <laughs> sort of a problem. This area, whenever it rained, we'd have a bit of a lake over here. So we're still working on that. And we put a new entrance uh, back here. There used to be a, a garage door there, and that just always was a pain to deal with. Uh, for local customers, we have an area here where uh, they can come and get refills on fresh water and RODI water and salt water. And that's all on the outside, so people don't have to bring buckets inside and all that in the area where folks can order things online and come and pick up since we aren't uh, open and we don't plan to be open uh, every day even when we do open back up. So this is a new entrance way here. Uh, really great for us because, like I said, it used to be a garage door here and that was always difficult to deal with. So now we have a legit doorway there. Um, so the fire started uh, right in this area. Uh, it had nothing at all to do with our tanks. You would think here a facility with all these tanks and water and electronics and everything, uh, that would be the source of the problem. But no, it was a light fixture here and uh, took out all of this area, which was our office area and packing area. So now it's completely different. Um, uh, this area is where we're going to be growing uh, copepods, rotifers, uh, phytoplankton. We had started doing that uh, and was really taking off, uh, becoming very popular for us in sales. And when the fire came, it really got uh, contaminated. And I just decided at that point we were going to pull the plug and just start over. So we have this nice, shiny new area. Uh, all the walls are covered in this FRP. And uh, we have lots of light here. We have these uh, powerful LED strips here, which is going to be more than enough light for growing our phytoplankton. And we have all these new containers. So we're actually this week getting this up and going. We work in conjunction with the local uh, university here, and we get some of our starter cultures from them. Uh, so that's this area. We're really happy with this. Uh, new flooring. We have this rubber mats in the work areas. Uh, this area hasn't changed too much. This is our uh, uh, acclimation. Uh, new shipments come in and we do our acclimation here. Uh, again, the floors and the FRP and the walls. Uh, this is the back of the display tanks, our salt water mixing area, and then our our fresh water, uh, we have uh, well water, so we go through all sorts of steps to get uh, purified fresh water, and that's our storage area for that. And this is going to be a little desk area with a computer uh, for us to work on in our in our pod area, and this is our new uh, showroom that used to be our office area. And this is completely redone. So we have an area here with frozen food. And this is going to be an area, we're still working on this a little bit, where we're going to have what we call our pod pub. So we're going to have an area where you can uh, fill up containers and reuse containers for um, getting phytoplankton and copepods and rotifers and all that. Uh, we've also taken the opportunity to put up a lot of photos of different adventures I've taken. For example, setting up a coral farm in the Solomon Islands and 
um, a little bit about my adventures in Tahiti, setting up a clam farm there. We also have these uh, fluval tanks that we're going to be offering to customers as a package deal. Well, you wouldn't take this actual one, but you would. We have others, and uh, you'd say, "Hey, I really like that one." So we would send folks home with the tank and the rock and the sand and the corals and the fish and everything and a bucket of salt water and some fresh water and uh, you know instructions on how to set it up so it's a great way for folks to get into the hobby or maybe add another small tank uh, this is our uh, uh, cafeteria let's say <laughs> our little uh, our little nook here that has uh, a sink and a microwave and fridge and coffee maker and that so um, this is our soft coral display tank and this is completely redone from what we had a little difficult to see uh, with all the blue lighting on there right now but that's loaded with hundreds of leather corals zoanthids mushrooms gorgonians all soft corals in that one um, here's ruby <laughs> Ruby's our retired uh, reading uh, boxer. Uh, all the photos in here are photos that uh, I had taken on some of my different adventures. And uh, there's some interesting ones. There's uh, our packing area. There's an interesting shot of some of the sharks in Tahiti. So this is our main um, livestock area. And if folks recall, we used to have tanks over here that had um, rock and inverts, and the rock is now moved over here. And we have a TV up there, and all our live rock, we carry the uh, real reef rock, so we have the regular real reef and shelf and branch. And this is our fish area. And we only stock tank-raised fish, no wild fish at all. So that's mostly clownfish and some gobies, dotty backs, that type of thing. Uh, again, some more of the artwork on the walls. And then I've added these tanks for anemones. So we have one that has uh, rock anemones and another one with the uh, mini carpet, the maxi mini carpet anemones and more of the fish and as they say we we have no wild collected fish whatsoever and don't plan to so um, you know disease issues to deal with uh, all the fish are happy and healthy and I need to update our website with all the new fish that I have um, this is uh, an area that where we do some of our uh, fragging work and another area here with our saw and all the various frag plugs that we use uh, this is our main sump room nothing has really changed too much in here so this probably needs a little updating maybe on uh, a few things and I've done some of that but this was not really affected at all by the fire um, that's the main sump room that our systems drain into and we have our filtration so this is our inside coral system um, this tank has mushrooms and zoanthids and I have a tank here that has all um, types of euphelias and, and we have several areas where we have all the stock which is on our website. This tank has uh, a variety of things including blastomusa frags and colonies that are growing out, various colonies, lobophilias, cinerinas, pectinias, chalices. Here's all the cinerinas that we have. Uh, more Blastomusa colonies. This is the 600 gallon 
display tank. So for those of you that have been to our facility, uh, you may know a little bit about the history of this tank. So this was a custom tank that a customer of ours um, built for themselves, had built for themselves, and never set it up. And I guess they were moving and said, hey, we need to get rid of this tank. Are you guys interested in it? They said, yeah, sure. You know, they said, well, okay, we'll just come and pick it up and uh, it's yours. So we got it and brought it here to our facility. And at the time, really didn't have any uh, interest in setting it up. So it sat outside for probably a couple of years and was uh, basically a breeding ground for mosquitoes out there. So eventually, um, one day when we had a, a local reef club come in, a bunch of strong guys were here. It took about eight or ten people to move this tank, and we moved it in the facility. And if you've been at our facility, you know that for a couple of years it sat with uh, either empty or with some rock in it, some dry rock in it, and I never really got around to setting it up. Well, finally, now, with the fire, um, we decided to move it to the current location and I've actually tied it in with this uh, coral system and I've gotten it set up and it's been set up for probably oh six or eight months or so and this is our LPS display tank so a wide variety of euphelias, blastomusa, pectinias, uh, you name it everything that would be considered a larger polyp stony coral as well as uh, home to 20 yellow tangs, which were tank raised and have grown up quite nicely. Uh, and this was really uh, populated prior to the shutdown of the exports from Hawaii of yellow tang. So I guess these guys are quite a bit more valuable now than what they originally were. We have some tank raised damsels in there as well. So this tank uh, looks really nice uh, this is definitely one of the highlights of the facility and there's some more of our inside tanks more of the photos that will be hanging on the walls again all these are photos that I've taken in some of my various trips so this tank has um, some inverts in it this has sand in it and I keep various things like emerald crabs in the baskets, um, feather dusters, there's some sea squirts there, uh, there are starfish and different types of shrimp that live in that tank. This is another tank with some of the items which are on our website. There's a bunch of blastomusa. And then we have uh, our greenhouse, which uh, hasn't really changed uh, because of the fire. All our livestock were um, just kept going, basically. Luckily, uh, our electrical power was not affected from the fire, so we had no issues as far as our livestock. And we've been operating since uh, a year ago, February. Uh, still shipping out orders and been actually uh, quite busy because of the the pandemic situation. Lots of folks have been home and uh, business has been really uh, bustling. So um, I was in here every day between trying to clean up and rebuild from the fire and keeping the business going. And through most of the last uh, year, that was without uh, any air conditioning and heating and that type of thing and it was really uh, kind of grubby with all the soot and everything so it was definitely a challenge but uh, we've gotten over that so this tank was one of our other display tanks the 215 gallon tank just like that soft coral tank but this one is all SPS coral so um, it's all Acrophora and monophoras and things are just growing like crazy in here. So this is in the greenhouse, but we do have LEDs on this. This is under an overhang out here in the greenhouse. And this is just one of the tanks out here that I have 
all of our parent colonies of things that are growing out that I per periodically take frags from. And this is everything from different chalices. Uh, for example, this is the one uh, we call the um, class clown chalice. Um, we have quite a few of those growing out in here. Um, lots of different chalices, cyphastrias, stylosineas, um, different favias, bavites, um, zoanthids. So we'll let them grow out here and then I'll take frags from these and then really in all of these tanks are grow outs of frags from those pieces that we then take frags from the frags. So it's not often that I'm really taking frags from these parent colonies where most of the frags come from are from these which are allowed to grow out to a certain point um, and then we take frags from them. You can see evidence of that here where some of them are cut. Um, we were actually strategizing this morning and saying some of these pleastrias are grown out enough that we need to uh, frag some of these this coming week. So each week we'll go through, see what the status of things are, and then decide you know what needs to be cut. Um, you can see some of these chalices have gotten pretty, uh, pretty insanely uh, large. So. Uh, we need to frag some of those. This is also where I keep um, our clams out here. I also supplement with uh, metal halide and some LED out here as well as just the natural sunlight. Uh, it's shaded. Some areas have double shading and that really comes in as we go into the summer more from temperature control but also a lot of the corals just it would be too much light Form. So these are, for example, uh, Pachycerus or elephant skin corals and they do really well out here in the greenhouse but they could definitely get bleached if they have too much light. So these are under the double shaded area. Um, these are some of the um, different Fabias, uh, Dragon Soul and Prism Fabias and things like that so you can see a lot of these are definitely ready to be cut again and again as I mentioned this is where I keep the clams so the cultured clams will be in this area we have very few at the moment we're waiting for our next shipment from the farm and also some different SPS corals over here these are various uh, Colors of Pasilophoras, Stylophoras, Bird's Nest, all that type of thing. So I have an area with those. There's some more Pasilophoras, Monophoras, um, some leather corals. So I've got leather coral parent colonies out here. We grow a lot of different leather corals. Uh, there's an area with Xenia. Um, these are all different colors of zoanthids. They're allowed to grow out. Uh, then we have various stages of star polyps. Star polyps, yes, star polyps. There really isn't a day that goes by that we don't ship out um, several pieces of star polyps. Probably star polyps and xenia are probably the two most popular corals that we ship, even though we have every other type of high-end coral, so-called high-end coral, those are still um, the most popular coral. So you can see here are some of the early stage ones. These are some that we cut this last week that are just uh, opening back up. These are some in uh, second and third stages where these are starting to grow out a bit. And then our final ones that we actually wind up shipping out as frags. And then these are bright green star polyps.
But there's lots of other corals next to them are uh, scrolling cyphas, uh, excuse me, uh, scrolling turbinaria. It's another popular coral. We have several different color versions, green polyp, yellow polyp, and different, these are the yellow polyp ones here, and those other ones are the green polyp. So this tank has lots of cyphastrias and morphavias and also uh, some of the crazy mushrooms, different bounce mushrooms, uh, Superman mushrooms, uh, also a little bit more uh, Lastimusa grow out out here. Uh, this tank has uh, all monopores, various colored plating monopores and encrusting monopores. And you'll also notice uh, I have baskets with different macro algaes, uh, Dragon's Breath, Chato, um, other various macro algaes growing out here. Uh, so generally this area is where the wild collected clams, so those are like the teardrops and some of the others. Again, just a few of them left right at the moment, but normally this whole area is filled with uh, clams and we'll have some more coming in in the next couple of weeks. Uh, this tank has mostly gorgonians, the tank raised gorgonians. Uh, we carry uh, four or five different varieties uh, always. So these are the uh, purple willows and we have purple knobbies, orange, uh, quirky fingers, uh, purple ribbons, and golden willows as well. And we have some other grog pieces. This tank is a little bit deeper than the others. These are uh, eight inches deep and this one is 18 inches deep. So we put some uh, corals such as Galaxia uh, that get quite large and some of the chalices that grow uh, crazy large and some of the leather corals that get quite large. Um, just as an example, this is a Galaxia grow out colony and they just kind of keep going in here. We have a bunch of these bigger pieces and then we take frags from those and then <clears throat> what we actually do is on a regular basis take additional frags from the frags so you can see uh, you know like this piece is definitely of the size where we need to cut that again and it's also one of our more popular corals so um, the so-called bread and butter corals uh, galaxias some of the plating monoporas zinnias and mushrooms and star polyps and zoanthids the uh, um, what are generally considered beginner corals actually are some of the most popular corals. As I say, we grow every type of coral and we also sell a lot of those, but on an everyday basis we really sell a lot of those basic corals. We also have several type of sponge that we grow. This is the photosynthetic uh, purple sponge and this can be handled out of the water unlike other sponges and it's photosynthetic does really well out here in our greenhouse so we just kind of let that grow wild out here wherever it wants and um, so that's a little tour of the greenhouse um, some of the updates I'm doing out here is I am going to be adding some LED lights to these tanks just like I have over here um, just because on some of the overcast days or even just in general if we have customers in here it's rather difficult to appreciate the colors of things under the natural sunlight so um, adding the LEDs will really help folks um, be able to tell what we have and it's be a little bit easier for us working out here as well so back on the inside um, as I said, our heating and air conditioning uh, was basically destroyed with the fire and that took quite a while for that to come around. So as you can imagine, 
in a facility like this, you have a lot of humidity, and when you have that much humidity and you have electronics, it's not a good mix. So we were having some of the controllers for our pumps and uh, lights and stuff starting to go out last year, and it was not pleasant uh, working in here. Basically, it looked like uh, the floors kind of look a little bit like a swimming pool. So um, I took the initiative myself and uh, installed a dehumidifier, which is not an AC unit, but just a dehumidifier, and that really made a world of difference for us. So um, we've come a long way since the fire. We've been able to uh, do lots of upgrades that uh, of things after being in business for 20 years. You know, you look back and you say, oh, we wish we would have done that that way or this a different way. And we took the opportunity to do some of those upgrades. So we're really excited to um, soon be opening for folks to be able to walk in. And it's probably going to be uh, towards the end of April. And we'll certainly have that posted on our Facebook page and probably be sending emails out and... Uh, We'll let everyone know about that, and we look forward to seeing all our friends again that we haven't been able to see for over a year, and um, I think that you'll really like some of the improvements that we've made, and certainly on the stock that we've been getting in uh, has been phenomenal of late. As you may know, I used to go to Indonesia every month, uh, before the pandemic. I haven't been there since, but we have some really good relationship with uh, folks over there as well as in Tonga, and we regularly get uh, cultured clams and wild clams from Tonga, and they do really well, and we also um, have recently received, for the first time anyone's received, a um, aquaculture license uh, in Tonga. So we're going to be culturing corals and clams there. And we're really, really excited about that because um, it's rather rare in this business to be able to control um, your supply. Usually you're at the mercy of uh, someone diving somewhere who's selling their corals to an exporter and so you're, by the time you're receiving the animals, you know, it might be in someone else's hands uh, two or three times before you receive it. But with having our own farm, uh, we'll have complete control over that. And we have quite a bit of experience in setting these things up. This, again, is in the Solomon Islands, and this is probably about uh, 15 or so years ago now uh, that I went there and helped set that up. And so, you know, we've done this before. Uh, they're not really familiar with how to do it in Tonga, but uh, I'll be going there as soon as they open back up. It's one of the few places that did not experience uh, the uh, virus, so uh, they're still shut down, and I assume until uh, their population gets vaccinated and everyone coming in is vaccinated before they're going to open back up. But I'm sure probably sometime later this year, that's probably going to be opened back up for us to be able to go there and, and really get that up and going. So here is our new facility. Um, let us know what you think, and we look forward to seeing all of you really soon. So take care. Ruby's excited, can't you tell? <laughs> take care.